Good morning, I've just left my hostel in Rotterdam. It's about quarter past 10. I'm on my way to The Hague and then on to Amsterdam. There's a few things I want to see in The Hague, hence why I'm going there and making a longer trip for myself, but hopefully it'll be worth it. Uh, the hostel was good, nice to have a proper bed. However, it's always a bit awkward in the morning when you're trying to leave, packing all your bags and stuff and everyone's still asleep. So waking everyone up. Oh well. So my first stop is called the Celestial Vault. To be honest, it's a little bit out of my way, but it should be quite interesting. Uh, it's quite really hard to explain. I'm not entirely sure what it does, but it's this circle thing when you lie in the middle of it and look at the horizon. I think it like bends the shape of the horizon or something, but uh, I guess I'll tell you more when I get there and show you what it does. So I've just come to this bike shop to get this new stand fitted. This one is so much better. It actually keeps my bike up. I haven't said that, I almost just fell. <laughs> but thank you. So I went into that bike shop hoping to buy a front rack and I came out of a kickstand instead. Uh, this one is so much stronger and sturdier and it holds the weight of my bike with all my bags on. When I park it previously, it would, have to, it would topple a lot or I'd have to balance it. But this one is, yeah, a lot better. Uh, I'm really struggling to find front racks though. No shops seem to sell them, unfortunately. I'll just have to put up with the uh, two on the back for now. The good news is I've arrived at a celestial vault. The bad news is it's up there. This is going to be a struggle. I made it. I hope this is worth it. At least I'm the only one here. I think you lie on that and then the horizon looks weird. Try it out. So it's kind of good. If I uh, lay back with my head on this rock and look towards the horizon, it looks like this. So it looks arced. Was it worth a 20 mile detour to come and see it? I'm not sure, but interesting nonetheless. That's what it looks like the right way around. Well, that was kind of interesting. I did panic quite a lot when I lost connection to my drone and thought I wasn't going to get it back. But now that my heartbeat is beating at the usual rate per minute again, I've now got the 15 mile ride to the Leiden University Medical Centre, where there's a particular person that I want to meet. I want to introduce to you a friend of mine. Now, he's quite shy, he doesn't say a lot, but trust me, he is a top bloke. Meet Zedon. Homunculus Loxodontus is his full name, and he's really out of this world. I meet his friend over there, look. I don't know her name, actually. Let's go and say hello. Yeah. Hello. Oh, it's good to see my old bud Zedon. But now I've left him, I've got a 26 mile ride into Amsterdam. And I've just passed my first field of tulips. Beautiful. Hopefully I'll see even more of that. Hopefully on a sunnier day as well. It's a bit overcast today. Check this out. I'm on the 20 mile home straight into Amsterdam. And just to my right is Schiphol Airport. And I've got planes going over my head. Let's go a bit faster, see if I can get right under it. Uh, am I gonna get there in time? Or is it just going straight above me? You'll see it from the other side. Uh. There you go, look. Pretty unique.
Okay, it's 10 to 8. I've just arrived at my campsite. I've ridden 65 miles today. It's been quite tough because the winds have been quite strong and I've just been pretty tired because I haven't had much to eat, unfortunately. Uh, but I've got uh, two nights here. So I've got a day off tomorrow in Amsterdam, which I'm looking forward to. Nice little rest day. Uh, gonna go into the city and explore. First of all, I need to figure out how we're getting here. I think the reception's shut, but that's open. Okay, here's my spot. It's a little bit like being at a festival. Not quite as chilled as the last campsites, but it will do. I'm shattered. I'm gonna pitch my tent, eat some food, and then crash. So, see you tomorrow. Cheers. Still can't put my things together. Apparently it's called cyclist hand or cyclist palsy and it's common in long distance cyclists because of the uh, continual riding position. But there's enough about my weird fingers. Uh, just done my washing and now I'm off for a day exploring around Amsterdam. Just a few bikes then. You wouldn't want to forget where you parked your bike, would you? There's a nice smell of herb in the air. Uh, there's quite a few coffee shops around. I might go to one later for coffee, of course. So probably not known by many and people probably just walk straight underneath him without realizing he's there like this lot here but check out this little fella the little woodcutter <laughs> that's me done for today it's just as tiring on my days off walking around various cities as it is when i'm cycling to be honest so i'm having a relatively early evening so i've got a 60 odd mile cycle to a place called Swall tomorrow and I'm staying at another campsite so see you tomorrow cheers good morning it's just gone half nine I've got about a 60 odd mile ride today to a place called Zwoll uh, had a nice day off in Amsterdam good to rest those muscles and limbs of mine uh, met a few other cycle tourers which was good the guy pitched next to me was from Cambridge which is where I'm from originally. And he lives on Mill Road, which is literally just down the road from where I grew up. And then I was chatting to a guy this morning from New Zealand who's cycling around Europe on a fold-up bike with his girlfriend. So that's interesting to listen to his stories. Uh, I think he's called The Hobo Cyclist on YouTube, so I'll put a link below for that. But for now, it's good to be back on the road. I actually quite miss it when uh, I've had a day off, to be honest. So, here we go. Morning sheep. Time to get up now, rise and shine. Come on, stretch it out. Ah. It's really smooth riding today. I'm really enjoying it. There's hardly a breeze. Look how still that water is. It's a lovely temperature. And guess what? My knee doesn't hurt anymore, which is so good. And nor does my bum. Uh, so that's a nice change. Just arrived at my first stop and these trees behind me are what I've come to see. They might look just like a normal bunch of trees just planted together. But look what happens once I send my drone up.
So hopefully that was clear from the drone shot what that looked like. So it's actually an art installation by a person called Marina Spozem. And it's called the Green Cathedral and it's based on the Cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris. Now I've got a 40 mile ride to my campsite in Zwoll. Just stop for a second, because not every day you get to be this close to a wind turbine. <laughs> and touch it. Let's go up the stairs. I wish I could go in it. I wonder if the door's open. Probably not. Locked. Hi. Check this out for a four leaf clover. Probably the best one I've ever found. Big one as well. I'm currently on this really long road surrounded by hundreds of wind turbines and a nice row of trees. There's a few uh, tulip fields back there, but unfortunately they hadn't really come out just yet. There's some guys doing maintenance. You can probably just see them on uh, abseiling on the side of the wing there. I wonder if they'll let me go up inside because the door's open. Sometimes if you don't ask, you don't get. So I'm gonna see what they say. Hi there. Hey. Hey, I just wondered, would I be able to go up? Sorry? Would I be able to go up to have a look? Oh. You can't go up. No? We are working now. Okay, okay, just thought I'd ask in case. Uh -huh. Fair enough. Well, you don't ask, you don't get. <laughs> and I certainly didn't get that time. So that four-leaf clover hasn't brought me much luck. That's why. I was coming up this hill and changed gear and my chain slipped and has bent my derailleur. Luckily, I've got a friend called Pedro who used to work in a bike shop and he's super knowledgeable about how to fix bikes. So I gave him a FaceTime and he basically talked me through what I needed to do. Unfortunately, my mechanical knowledge isn't that great. Um, I can ride. just about change the tire, but that's about as far as it goes. Um, he told me to align the derailleur by pulling it out from here so it's all the chains in line before it was clipping on the spokes hopefully it's enough to get me to the next bike shop to align it properly uh, i really hope so because i don't really want to have to push it for 10 miles and he also taught me this little trick that if your hands are covered in grease and oil get some earth rub rub it in the earth and the soil and stuff and it really does actually get the main layer off and now I can actually touch things without getting grease everywhere so that's good. Oh, I'm not gonna lie I was a little bit panicky back there but thanks to Pedro he really did save my bacon so cheers for that and if he hadn't showed me what to do for our base time I'm not quite sure what I'd have done because as you can see there's not a lot in terms of bike shops around here. I think I might just sort of go steady from now on and uh, stay in the same gear at least till I get to Ah, oh, midges. Oh man. Oh, get attacked. <laughs> oh. Stay in the same gear and try and get out of these midges. I think I might put my glasses on. Cycling by this lake is lovely, but there's so many midges. Look at them all caught in the hair of my arm. You see that? Just cycling past this, and for ages I thought it was like some bouldering practice rock thing, but I don't think it is. There's like steps at the back and you can go in it. So I'm gonna go and check it out. Maybe it's some like spacecraft. Hi. Hi. Do you know what this is? Oh, a viewpoint. A viewpoint. That's, that's the only thing which I know. It's an elaborate viewpoint. Really does seem like the stairway up to some spacecraft. It's pretty cool. It's just a 
viewpoint. Climb over these bars. how flat it is. This is Holland for you. Not a hill in sight. The only hill that I managed to find, I managed to slip my chain on it. So that's annoying. So I just passed this bike shop and this friendly man here, what's your name? Arvid. Arvid. He's kindly fixed my derailleur, so that's straight now. And by chance, these guys here have got new racks put on their brand new bikes and their old rack fits on my front. So now I've got front racks which I've been looking for everywhere and thankfully now I have them. Oh, what an absolute legend that guy was. Not only did he fix my derailleur, he also installed some new front racks. So I've now got some panniers on the front. So I don't have to worry about the too much weight on the back and I've been looking for front panniers for ages as you probably know and he only charged me 15 euros for them which is not bad considering he said that usually a bike shop would charge 55 euros an hour just for labour I think uh, he's just really into his cycling and quite passionate about it and he was just very keen to help and he's going to give the 15 euros that I paid for these to the guy who they actually belong to because they're second hand so everyone's a winner in that scenario really so yeah really happy about that and i feel like that four leaf clover may be starting to work it's seven o'clock i've done 64 miles today and i've just arrived at the location for my campsite really scenic little church there at the end and all the dutch flags are out because it's liberation day which is a bit like Remembrance Day in England. Uh, I feel like I was very fortunate today. Um, I feel like that break in my der derailleur was a blessing in disguise. Because if I hadn't have broken that, I probably wouldn't have gone into that bike shop and I probably wouldn't have got these front racks. So it was all pretty amazing. It all worked out for the best, to be honest. Uh, and the, the guy in the bike shop even gave me a little gingerbread cake thing as like, just a, as a kind gesture, which was so kind of him. But anyway, I think this is the entrance. Let's have a look. Is this it? I think it is. All to myself. How nice is this? Look at that. Now that is what I call a campsite. Ah, oh, amazing. Well, that was quite a day. But I'm really happy to be at this camp spot. Look at the view, how beautiful is that? And the owner's so friendly, he even gave me a beer on the house and showed me their two vintage cars in that garage. They've got a, uh, an old Fiat that he bought from a guy in Italy and an Alfa Romeo Spider, both very cool. But yeah, I'm just gonna set up my tent now. I've got electricity over there, I'm the only person here and just enjoy the evening, I think. I think I've deserved it after the events of today. So until tomorrow, cheers. cheers.